<laughs> well, they taught me not to be excited, so I'll try to calm down. I want you to think of a football game, live show, or an event that you really like. Why would you physically want to attend such events? Is it the crowd? Is it your ability to shout until you no longer can do that? Or the audience? On contrary, why some of you would like to watch the same event at home? Is it the commentator such as Sami Shawali shouting and giving you all those information you could not know by yourself? Or maybe director sends you those highlights and live statistics and replays, zooming in and zooming out. Or maybe basically you could not find the seat. Now, what you are working on today basically will combine both of these worlds. Thanks to these four young men and some people around the world and technologists before them, you, didn't, you don't need to imagine it anymore. My speech today will be about the journey of this four. By the way, that's my face over there here. Thank you very much. How they got to know each other, how miserably they had failed, got back up, worked hard, succeeded, and how they dealt with their experience. Qatar University. Since we have lots of loyal people, another round of applause for yourself on Qatar University. Again. <laughs> Qatar University, it is the place where I was honored and pleased to meet these four people. All the amazing people I met, all the things I learned, shaped part of my personality. I remember like it was yesterday in just corridors of Qatar University, I met one of my fellow friends. We had a little bit friendly talk, and we figured out that we have something common. We both like entrepreneurial competitions. We almost spent two hours discussing throwing ideas. We talked about simple apps, simple games, until complex things that could take us decades, like nanotechnology and cloud computing. Basically, we, we were thinking that we could do this stuff in just a couple of months. We were so naive. Then my friend suggested that he knows some very good students. They are amazing and good in their field. They know what they, they do. He introduced the rest of the team to me. We had lots of rehearsal sessions. We met many times. And we had a very common and popular term called cornering. By cornering, I mean like when one of us provides an idea, we would attack, squeeze, and demolish him until we get something out of it. We conclude this idea. Back then, augmented reality was something cool and new. We came up with an idea using augmented reality for factories to make it smarter. And then we submitted our project to a worldwide competition called Imagine Cup. The competition is organized by Microsoft. After a few days of submission, we were notified that we are shortlisted for the final round. Happy news. It was first time for us to, to be in such, in such level. As any other competitions, Organizers had set some rehearsal sessions for us. They told us, make 10 minutes presentation. It was our first experience with non-academic events. As a good student, we Googled how to make a killer pitch. Eventually, we designed and prepared a 56 killer pitch slides. We were ready, well prepared. We went to the rehearsal sessions. We started the presentation very proudly. Slide one, slide two, slide three, slide 15. They said, stop. 
you're saying what's going on? Time is up. Out of 56 slides, just we finished 15 slides. We received all kinds of humiliations. We actually got demolished. So I just ask us, guys, what are you presenting? What's our idea? Asking that question itself was a problem for us after presenting our presentation. The biggest problem, we didn't have any answer for those questions. That moment was really embarrassing for us. Four of us standing in front of judges. Each of us were looking at each other, hoping one of us would answer, but none had any answer. We wanted to run away, just to say stop. But I knew what's coming for us. Before judges starting their questions, I knew what's facing us. I knew that. <laughs> so basically what I did, I picked a corner where judges cannot see me. I grabbed my laptop, I went to that corner. I was pretending that I was writing notes. So to avoid all those kind of questions and humiliations accordingly. Judges started asking questions. Guys, you talked about sensors. You talked about electric devices. You talked about environment. Mm, wait, where is the fourth guy? And then that time they grabbed me and they took me from my comfort zone to the center of universe with my friends to get humiliation again. It was a sad moment. I will never forget it, basically. They were asking. We didn't have any answer for it until one of the judges told us a sentence. He said, guys, never ever give up on your idea. Fight for it. It is your idea. Basically, that sentence, still, it's been one year and a half. Whenever I do anything, I remember it by heart. I tell myself, I don't want to be in that situation again. Never. For us, what he said was an impulse for a dead guy who was about to die. Our way out, we promised ourselves for the final presentation, we'll work hard. We'll impress everybody. And we did it. We had a very good presentation, but we lost. It was our first failure ever. It was our first experience with non-academic events such as we, hard, we worked hard, but we eventually failed. We didn't know how to deal with this failure. Depression was in such a way, like four of us, we did not meet, see, or talk to each other for almost a week. Story doesn't end here, by the way. While preparing for a Magic Cup, we submitted for another project called Challenge 22. It is basically a competition organized by Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. The guy before me, he talked about it, Ahsan. The theme of this competition is Qatar 2022. We heard about it actually by luck. And our focus here was utilizing augmented reality to be for the fans inside the stadium, providing him with information about his surrounding about replaybacks, statistics, and highlights. By luck, or by chance, I don't know which, after a couple of days, we got notified that we were shortlisted for a second round. Out of 330 teams, just 36 teams were shortlisted for this round. And we were one of them. It was a happy moment, basically, for us. Thank you. Then, again, we met each other and initiated the contact. We talked. We had brainstorming sessions to make our idea better. Second round wasn't friendly at all. It was a little bit tough. They requested us to submit a full technical version of our idea, of our project, with business plan. All of these were new for us. We were just university students, second and third level. Also, the bad news, it was at month May 2015. Actually, university's favorite month. All the exams, labs, projects, quizzes, 
deadlines are in that month. And because of the university pressure, we are about to miss the deadline. And we are really lucky that Challenge 22 organizers extended a little bit the deadline so we could catch it. We submitted our project. Done. Then the breathtaking news that we got shortlisted for the final round. Out of eight, 36 teams, just 18 teams were shortlisted for the final. And for your notice, this competition was not just for the students. It was for professors, scientists around the Gulf region as well. It was happy news as well. But worse to come. Final presentation was exactly at the heart of our final exam, June. We went to talk to some of our faculties to seek their advice. They told us, guys, that's great you made it this far. That's really good. Put it on your CV, forget about it. Just focus on your academic. We had to choose for it. Eventually, we decided that we'll continue and present our idea for the final round. When at the first day, we went to the workshops, we met a couple of our professors there. You're asking them, sorry, doctor, are you mentoring a team? They said, no, we are participants here. It was a shock for us. We met with each other. We said, guys, now miracles cannot save us. God bless our sir. We continued our project. We presented our idea in front of judges. We had to choose between academic excellency and winning the competition. Let's just say that I just got a couple of Ds in that semester. Well, actually many Ds I got in that semester. But the good news is we won the competition. Thank you. Out of 18 teams, just six teams were qualified to be a winner. Six teams meant to be a winner. They called during the ceremony, they called our names. We are the first group to be called as well. Actually, at that moment, we didn't realize the names they are calling are for the people who lost or who won. We didn't know that. We are seeing all the audience, audiences are looking at us just because we won, but we are hesitating. Until the lady came and took our hand to receive the prize. And at that moment, we realized, oh, actually, we won. Forwarding this happy moment, we got both a generous grant for our project from Supreme Committee for, Legacy, for Delivery and Legacy to take our project forward. Also, they gave us a chance and incubation in QSCP Accelerator. By incubation, I mean it's a period that startups are provided with necessary training and mentorship to take their idea forward to the market. Some of you might think the story ends here with happy ending. Actually, no. The next three months, we work hard to create our first prototype. But we faced a dead zone. We had a dead end. Our nice project was facing some technical problems like the delay between augmented reality and the fans inside the stadium and some other factors as well. Our project was hopeless. We said, why not we don't flip everything? Why instead of bringing features outside of the stadium to the fans inside the stadiums, like the information they get and the commentators under their ears? Why not? We take experience inside the stadium to the people outside the stadium, in their homes, in coffee shops, and other places. And here, our project rebirthed. By this point, our project was well established. We called our cute project Arix. Amazing. By this point, our project was well established. We called it RX, stands for 
amazing reality view experience. If I want to define our project, what is it about? We define it as a technology startup that creates and delivers live and on-demand virtual reality experience. Our focus is 360 content management. I'm glad to say that Arvex was developed and created by four young men. All of them are from Middle East, started from Qatar University. By that time when they started this project, they were a student in Qatar University. Now most of them have graduated, but unfortunately I am the only one so far trapped in Qatar University. I hope I will finish it soon. A couple of weeks ago, we finished our first project for Katara. We call it, we call it Katara 360 Virtual Tour. And also, I'm glad to mention that today's event is a streamed live 360 in virtual reality experience. And as you have been notified, you have to download our app, which is called Arvix VR, if you have Android. If you download it, you can see both our Katara project as well as streaming for today's event in 360. Okay. Now, I encourage each of you, since you got those nice cardboards, to download our app, it's called Arvix VR, and then try it out your cardboard. And then see what does it mean to be immersed inside virtual reality, because in virtual reality, we say, you won't believe it unless you try it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.